Hey everyone, it's Paul Bertarelli reporting for AbWeb. Today is December 17, 2018. If you know your aviation historical dates, you will recognize that as the 115th anniversary of the age of powered flight. And if you know your monuments, you'll recognize what's behind me as the Wright Memorial Monument at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. A couple things different about this year's first flight. One is the weather. It is absolutely sparkling blue and about 15 degrees warmer and 15 knots less wind than the Wrights had when they flew here in 1903. Second, if you look down the hill, you'll see what is the newly refurbished Wright Memorial Museum. It's got new displays, new lighting, and some upgraded features. Dave Halleck is the superintendent here at the park, and he's going to fill us in on some of the details. But before we do that, we're going to hear from Tom Crouch on why it's a good idea to visit this memorial on first flight day. And Tom, you'll recognize, is an author and a Wright expert, and he is a senior curator at the National Air and Space Museum. Oh, I think there's an argument to be made on visiting Wright Brothers National Memorial on First Flight Day. If for no other reason, it's when the descendants of the five people who were here that day, other than Wilbur and Orville, um, are all here. And it brings home to you just how close it really is uh, when you can shake hands with somebody who's grandfather, or in one case that I know, whose father was actually here and saw this that day. Um, I had a good friend who passed away not too long ago who was actually superintendent of all of Cape Hatteras National Seashore, including the Wright brothers. And his grandfather, as a 13-year-old boy, had been the first person to greet Wilbur Wright when he came ashore on the Outer Banks for the first time in 1900. That was my friend's grandfather. So, you know, you're a handshake away from what happened here. And there's something to be said about being here. And there's the monument itself. Um, I've been to a lot of national parks, a lot of national monuments, but there's something about this one, uh, just the design, the kind of art deco feel uh, that the monument up on the big hill has that I find really moving and, and uh, really neat. And if you want to know what this part of the world was like when they were here, you can just go four miles down the road to Jockey's Ridge and uh, you'll see what this part of the world was like when the rights were actually here. Uh, all sand, uh, not many trees at all. Somebody once asked Orville Wright what Kitty Hawk had been like when he was here, and his response was, well, it was like the Sahara or the Sahara as I imagine it to be. You know, we talked going all the way back to before 2003, before the centennial of flight, about building um, an entirely new visitor center down here. Um, but this visitor center is in itself an historic landmark, and um, that kind of thing got in the way of what else might have been accomplished. So um, I think this one is just fine. It's a lovely building. The exhibits are new, and they're much stronger than the exhibits that were here before. These, I was part of the process of putting them together, and they went together in a really wonderful and interesting interactive way with lots of different people involved. And uh, um, it's really worth coming down here to see the, the exhibitions, and you bet. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we... So this is the Wright Brothers National Memorial Visitor Center behind me. Uh, it was built starting in 1959 and opened to the public in 1960. And over the last two years, we've completely renovated the building and also designed, fabricated, and installed brand new exhibits as well. 
In terms of the building renovation, this was really a top to bottom renovation. The foundation of the building had suffered some uh, settling issues and we had to cut large sections of concrete out of the floor and fill uh, some of the areas underneath the foundation in with gravel. Uh, all of the electrical wiring throughout the building was replaced, all of the circuit breakers, all of the plumbing. There's a brand new roof on the building. All the windows that you see are were custom fabricated, brand new windows. They now match the original window style that was in the building in 1960. They're made out of 316L stainless steel, triple pane glass, and, and as you can imagine, well suited for the environment here with the winds and hurricanes and tropical storms that we have. Uh, all of the interior and exterior cypress wood was refinished in the building and uh, a lot of the original ceiling panels were restored and reinstalled. So really everything that you see in the building uh, is either new or has been uh, refinished in a way where it's now meeting the historical accuracy of the building in 1960. So the exhibits that were in the building before the uh, renovation were the original exhibits. Uh, they actually were held up remarkably well. They were uh, porcelain uh, finished exhibits, uh, but they really weren't meeting the needs uh, in the year 2018. So the focus of the new exhibitry really was to engage uh, the next generation of Park Service advocates and supporters and enthusiasts to uh, inspire uh, children and youth that come into the building and adults alike. Uh, one of the things that we did is we have more uh, museum objects in the flight room and we have more interpretive panels there so you can learn more as you walk through the flight room. We also have a 16 screen LED display that scrolls through historic images of the Wright brothers and their incredible accomplishments. We have a series of interactive interactive exhibits as well that really uh, in, engage youth and, and get them excited and interested uh, in the topics of science, technology, engineering, and math. So we're really pleased with the way they came out. When you come to the Wright Memorial, you'll certainly want to walk the flight line such as it is. It's marked by these stone blocks, each one of which indicates where the first four flights ended. That one back there is Orville's second, and this one is Wilbur's first. As Tom mentioned, first flight day is kind of special here. A lot goes on. One thing we didn't mention was that this year, Catherine G. Johnson was inducted into the first flight Hall of Fame. You will recall that name from the movie Hidden Figures. Uh, she was one of the early mathematicians who was instrumental in calculating trajectories for NASA in the early days of the space race, and she continued to work at NASA for many years. You can get to first flight down Route 158 from uh, the Virginia Beach area, or you can fly in the first flight airport here. There are no facilities here, but it has a nice long runway. It's open seven days a week, except for Christmas. I'm Paul Bertarelli reporting for AvWeb. Thanks for watching.